Good morning, National Council Board and members and the selection panel. My name is Candace Gordy and I'm a Wool Account Manager for Landmark in Bendigo. My involvement with and passion for the Australian wool industry began at an early age, growing up on our family merino property. Many weekends and school holidays were spent working on the farm where I enjoyed the hands-on aspects of sheep and wool production. I completed a Bachelor of Agriculture at the University of Melbourne, Dookie campus, graduating as both Ducks and Melbourne Victorian of my year. The Landmark Graduate Program was my first full-time role in the industry. My heart was set on a role with the, within the Landmark School activity following the graduate year. My commitment to the industry was tested though, where market conditions meant that a role was not immediately available. Rather than allowing this to change my direction or deter me entirely, I took a livestock processing role in our local branch. The 12 months I spent processing livestock sales allowed me to develop the working knowledge of the internal landmark systems. I continue to utilise these skills to provide support to our Brooklyn wool store, taking responsibility for the accounts payable role of sale data reporting and assisting with sale day processes. Undertaking these additional tasks deliver business efficiencies to our wool activity. An opportunity arose to take on the role of Wool Account Manager based in Bendigo and servicing clients in the central Victoria area, including a number of large accounts. My role has since increased and I am currently responsible for marketing 7,500 bales on behalf of 140 clients. I utilise the open auction process and wool trade to market clips and maximise returns for growers and also discuss options such as forward contracts, direct sales and supply arrangements. In my current role, I assist clients with sheep passing and round selection, as well as clip preparation and marketing. In my opinion, these activities maximise returns and develop sustainable businesses for the client base and also landmark. Last year, I assisted over 50 clients with round selection and purchases and classed over 8,000 young sheep. I believe that even small improvements in the performance of a flock not only improve profitability, but also provide a fantastic boost to the growers' confidence and re renew their enthusiasm for sheep and their enterprise. To add value to my client base, I make a conscious effort to stay up to date with broader sheep and wool industry changes and developments. I deliver accurate clip preparation and marketing messages, and as, as well as information on quality assurance schemes where applicable. I attend shearing schools in the area to chat with new industry entrants. I'm involved with the Elmore Youth for the Future trial, conducted by our local Best Wool, Best Lamb group, <coughs> comparing the wool and lamb returns from six different types of ewes. My contribution to the trial involves assisting with the selection of trial sheep, data recording and animal husbandry, as well as the display of uh, shearing and trial information at the Elmore Field Day event. Wool growers can benefit from seeing a comparison of breeds in their local area and benchmarking their own performance. I've stayed up to date with changes um, and the introduction of electronic tags for sheep in Victoria and provide information to growers on this topic. This year a number of growers have been electronically recording data while they've been classing their young sheep. I initiated and assisted to introduce educational sessions at the Loddon Valley Stud Merino Field Day over the last two years, which covered a range of topics. These educational sessions add value to field day visitors and significantly increase their numbers. I believe these are examples of how maintaining a broader industry knowledge base on top of the obvious wool preparation and marketing area can have a positive impact and deliver value to our clients. Being based in Bendigo has allowed me the opportunity to be involved for the past seven years with the Australian Police Competition. My first encounter with the competition was back in 2007 when my brother and I carefully selected three, three fleeces from our own flock to exhibit. For the past two years I have held the position of convener of the Australian Police Competition, the largest fully measured police competition in the world. This year, over 200 exhibitors entered 447 fleeces, an increase of 7% on the previous year. All wool growing states and 
and major wool types were represented. Each year I work with and manage and lead a great team to put together the competition and strive to build on its very strong foundations. I manage the entire competition process from the initial planning and securing of $17,000 of sponsorship, launching the competition, collecting and entering fleeces, <coughs> overseeing the transport and judging processes, right through to setting up the display at the show and receiving feedback. A considerable logistical effort is required to bring the competition together. I set and adhere timelines, adhere to timelines, manage data, work with the Australian Wool Testing Authority and the wider wool broking network, and in recent years have worked with the RASB to develop and implement an online entry system to manage fleece entries and streamline the receival and judging processes. In my opinion, the competition adds real value to the wool industry. Not only is it a fantastic educational resource with full test data and grower profiles displayed with each fleece, but it is also a fantastic benchmarking, benchmarking and marketing tool for exhibitors. Stud breeders often use the competition as a marketing tool, promoting their fleece results at ram sales and in their stud advertising activities. Georgina Wallace from Trefuse's Merino Stud, who has been awarded Grand Champion three times, has been thrilled with the results and feels that the measured assessment of her fleeces validates the breeding decision, decision she has made and the direction of her stud. There is also a charitable aspect to the competition with the generosity of exhibitors resulting in $164,000 being donated to national charities since its inception. I truly believe constant innovation and revision are required to ensure the success of the competition as an industry resource. Recently a class was introduced to reflect commercial demands catering for growers who shear at six to eight month intervals. The fleeces in this class are fully tested and the standard competition benchmarks are applied on a per week basis. The fleece growth in millimetres per week is calculated, as is the value in terms of cents per week. I believe the results of this, the performance class, are a fantastic marketing tool for stud producers who are shearing more regularly and can showcase the potential of their bloodlines. Further, it is a valuable resource for commercial producers who are considering changing their practice. Prior to the introduction of the performance class in the fleece competition, I had introduced the concept of shearing at more regular intervals to a number of clients. In response to overlength rules and market discounts they can attract, potential improvements in animal health and management, and positive returns for wool with increased tensile strength and consistency. John Bryant of Kankara and Pastoral was an early adopter of this practice. Seven years ago, he made the decision to shear his flock of 1,700 centre plus type sheep at six month intervals. This is a little bit about um, John and the practice. Um, the years a lot of work uh, studying the wool, uh, the weights, um, and gave him some very good advice to say that we wouldn't be suffering, any, we weren't suffering any penalties when we started doing the six month shearing. Uh, and that was the first uh, thing we want to know about, whether we could keep doing it or not. I think it's been a great success to do that, and I thank you, Candice, for your um, interest in the, in the whole thing and, and your help with figures and uh, calculations to say that uh, we'd probably grow a little more wool in 12 months than we would have shared once, and we'd probably suffered no penalties, we've not suffered any penalties for six months. Shearing being short of staple, where we may have suffered penalty if we'd been shearing <coughs> 12 months with good seasons because of uh, the staple a bit too long. So it's all been very satisfactory in that regard. It's also been satisfactory for the, um, the sheep themselves in that they uh, when they're short prior to lambing, they seek shelter better when they lamb. I think they stay healthier. Uh, they, I think, definitely, definitely have more lambs. It's, it's better for their fertility to be shorn every six months. Um, 
and it's better over the summer period if they've not got much wool on shearing prior, just prior to summer. Jonas achieved a landing percentage of 128% this year. The length, strength and CVH results of his wool fit with current trade specifications and on average the flock cuts 10% more wool over a 12 month period when shorn twice. He is able to spread his market risk and cash flow and there are also cost savings with crutching and chemical fly preventative treatments not always required. Staple length is a trait we consider carefully when classing with John's young sheep. This year John also undertook DNA profiling of his flock and I was involved with the sampling and interpretation of results. As with any industry, there are challenges facing ours, but there are also many opportunities for our sustainable, versatile, natural product. I believe that if we're able to embrace relevant technologies, breed productive and profitable animals, and create opportunities for future generations to become involved, that certainly a positive future for the Australian sheep and wool industries, and one which I look forward to being part of. Just going back over some of the aspects you talked about in terms of being a good broker and, and uh, being at the point of the job, what do you think is the most important aspects of being a good broker in, in your opinion? So I think it's a very multifaceted role, um, but I think it's very important to work with growers and get the product right on farm, so manage their flocks and help them with the breeding and selection to make sure the wool we're producing has the potential to meet the market requirements and then obviously working with them around clip preparation um, as well as time of shearing, managing seed and, and strength and all of those important characteristics um, and definitely sharing our information so farmers are definitely very technologically advanced these days but I think our role of still communicating with them face to face is really important to give them market information and also keep them enthused about their sheep as well and you know make practical suggestions on how they can improve on the farm to get the results and make them profitable. Well done Candice, I'm not sure when you find time to sleep. <laughs> um, are you comfortable selling through more than just a physical auction and how do you mitigate price risk of both market fluctuations, discounts and premium opportunities? So obviously the open auction I feel is the most widely used method of selling wool and we're having a, a fantastic run of it at the moment. Um, I use wool trade as a backup as well and I think as far as risk management I do discuss forward options with clients but generally speaking farmers are a pretty optimistic bunch and they've got great amounts of faith in their industry as well but shearing more often does allow them to spread their market risk as well so particularly our six month shearers where they previously might have only had their one clip to market to pick a sale or potentially spread it we've got wool coming into the system twice a year and we can we can manage our markets from there and we're not too far off getting our next clip return. What, what portion of your clients would be looking at um, split shearing? Um, it's hard, be, hard to put a percentage on it but I'd say they'd be yeah, a good number considering it and a few adopting. Um, we have a few that may do it with their young sheep, so they might have eight monthly shearings for the first two years and then they bring them back into the main system. Um, the younger sheep tend to be the ones we have to watch as far as overlength bulls. So yeah, I think more and more. And we've also found with those that have adopted it, it really puts a strong focus back on to driving that sheep and making sure nutrition's right and you're getting that productivity. So um, I think it, yeah, fair shorn sheep are obviously easier to manage and when John himself said, when you're focusing on squeezing out every last millimetre you can, you're really making sure you're, you're looking after your sheep and you've got them healthy. Sorry, this is my third last question. But um, <laughs> was it your idea to introduce that commercial class in the fleece competition? Uh, so up and I have been speaking with a number of commercial growers and we just felt maintain the relevance of the competition we really needed to cater for traditional operations but we really did need to have some
something that's a new and upcoming um, practice as well. So, um, yeah, I think any competition requires a committee, but as convener for the last few years, I've certainly pushed it along and made sure we can increase the entry numbers in that class. Um, so it generates such fantastic interest and there's real value in the results. Yeah, no, you um, well, at least you, you don't spend the whole Benio competition dealing with just stud breeders, so that's a good thing. Probably counts. What um, broke? You know, we live in a very in a changing world, and, and <coughs> we produce a product that takes six or eight or twelve months to produce, and there's a lag on it. But um, the, the technology side is things changing on a weekly basis. What do you see as the major opportunities, and I guess some of the challenges? the wool broking side of the industry in the next five to 10 years, and how do you think um, these can be addressed? Uh, so challenges for wool broking, I guess, um, it's about sharing of information, so better ways we can stay up to date with the changes, and the world's obviously moving at a terribly fast pace at the moment, and efficiently delivering those messages. So it's no doubt a lot of farmers are quite modern and they're using a lot of technology, but still, a large percentage of our client base relies on direct contact to inform them of market changes um, and industry movements as well. So I think yeah, our challenge is to introduce the technology and help people to move with, with the newest um, ideas. But, but certainly our main job is to assist them to grow the wool to get it to market and maximise 